Hey everyone, James here. So I'm super excited to be back um, to actually talk about a really awesome feature that's in preview today that you really should be taking a look at if you're a Xamarin native developer or even just a Xamarin Forms developer. And we call it Xamarin Forms Embedding. This is probably one of my new favorite features um, that we're coming out with. It's in preview today. You have to install a special NuGet feed to get it. But essentially what it does, if I scroll down this awesome blog post by David, is it allows you to take the traditional approach to Xamarin, which is sharing this you know, shared C-sharp business logic layer, all your models, view models, RESTful service calls. And then we're already crafting out iOS storyboards, Android XML, and UWP. But what if you could just create some shared screens, some Xamarin form XAML screens that are shared across all three of your applications, or even more as Xamarin forms grows or other platforms that you're supporting like Mac or other things like that. Now, this is an awesome feature that I've wanted for a long time. And David on here kind of showed how to do it on iOS and, and things like that. But I wanted to do it myself and I wanted to struggle uh, through this to see how hard it was or if it was easy. And what I found out is in just under like 10 to 15 minutes, I had the entire thing built uh, for an application and uh, was sharing user interface between each platform. And a lot of developers have asked me, well, James, why does this matter? I'm a you know, Xamarin native developer or even just a Xamarin uh, forms developer. Why do I even care about this? Well, you care about this because you're building out these really rich media experiences or really rich applications with animations and taking advantage of all the iOS and Android goodness, but you're creating other pages like details pages or settings or about pages or login pages that you just want to write once, one time and share. And that's what this is doing. Xamarin Forms Embedding enables you to share a XAML page with all the data binding, uh, dependency service, messaging center across your iOS, Android, and Windows native Xamarin applications. Um, that way, what's nice here is that you don't have to go all in. You can pick and you can dabble in Xamarin Forms and, and actually mix and match them really easily. But again, you're sharing now user interface where you've never been able to before in Xamarin native applications. This also means if you do some POC prototyping, so proof of concepting with Xamarin Forms, then you decide, oh, I need to make the switch to Xamarin native later on or go back and forth, you don't have to do um, lose all of your work, right? You can just simply start embedding these pages into Xamarin native app. So it's a really uh, great way of doing that. So there's a great um, blog post here that I'll put into the um, the, the actual show notes here, but it shows you how to do this. And it all starts with adding the special NuGet um, JSON feed uh, inside of here. So here's what I'm gonna have. I have this application that I've um, built out quite a few times ago, but it's my image search application. And this is a um, an Android application, an iOS application, and down here I have a shared project um, which has my models, uh, has my view models here that I have to go query image data and things like that. So if I run this application, we can see here that I have a, um, let me go ahead and run it over here on Android or on iOS. So over here I have, you know, a beautiful collection view with different images. I can integrate into different services. Over here I have a, a recycler view. I have a floating action button. You know, I'm using card views. I'm using uh, really rich controls over here for both um, iOS and Android. And this is a Xamarin native application. So if I go over to here, I have a main storyboard and you notice I have a navigation controller. I have a UI view controller over on Android. Oops, something went wrong. That's interesting. I probably compiled up. Let's go ahead and open that again. There we go. Let's open up this one. Over here, uh, my Android app, I have uh, some items, some main Android XML. I have a toolbar. I have values. I have themes. I have XML things. And what I'm using here is that really rich recycler view. So here I have all my toolbox items. I have some composite items, some images. I'm downloading and caching all of my images with Picasso. So I'm managing all of the bitmaps and everything myself. Now with this application though, while it's nice, I wanted to maybe be able to click on an item and navigate to a details page. And this details page was just going to show me a little bit of the um, image, some details on it. And then it was also going to show me maybe a button that I could click to analyze the images with cognitive services. So instead of adding yet another Android XML or going back into the storyboard and adding more pages and laying down and doing everything myself, I wanted to come in and use a Xamarin forms page, a content page. So when I go into manage new gets, what I've done here is I can go to my installed. 
And inside of here, I have the very bottom, blah, 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 somewhere, there it is. The Xamarin Forms 3.0 Embedding Preview. And I got there by adding a special URL. So there's NuGet, there's a bunch of other stuff, and here it is. So here is a special URL that I've added. You can do this in Visual Studio for Mac or Visual Studio 2017 or 15 or 2013, whatever you need. And that's all I've added. I add those to my iOS and Android projects. If you had a PCL, you would add it there. If you had a .NET standard, you would add it there. But the core here is that I just start my development like I normally would with Xamarin Forms at this point. So what I have here is this um, view model, which I've had before. It has a um, an observable collection of images. I have a selected image that I can get and set when I tap on something. I have a bunch of business logic in here to go get um, the, the, the image search results and I use a um, link to, to query them. And I also have some things to analyze the image or take a photo and analyze with one of the plugins. So this is my view model. It's the core logic of my application and I have this model in here for a thumbnail link, image link, file format, title, and text. And that's what's happening here is I, I'm, I'm creating these user interfaces inside the storyboards or the Android XML and composing them together. But what I want to do is share now a XAML page across um, the applications. So here inside the view folder in my shared code, I've added a Xamarin Forms XAML page right inside of here. So let me pump this up just a little bit here. There we go. So inside of here, I've inherited from a content page. I literally just right clicked, said add new item. And when I do that, I'm going to see that there's a Xamarin form section inside of here, right? So I can add a list view, a master details page, tabbed page. Here I just added a content page with XAML. Um, and what I've done here is I've gone ahead and said, hey, you know, I'm going to have this selected image. Um, that's the what I want to bind to. Uh, that's there. I'm going to have a view model here. So that selected image is what I'm going to pass in. So up top here, we have a selected image so I can data bind to it. So full data binding works here. I give it an image link so I can actually download the image. Xamarin Forms is handling the image, all processing, all that stuff. I put the title, the format, the link. I'm using labels. I'm using stacks. I'm using scrolls. I have an activity indicator here for is busy. Um, I can analyze this. I have a click handler. I could also do an I command. But here, for instance, I in the code behind, I simply um, have a details page. I have compile time XAML on. I pass it an image result and a view model that I want to do, and I simply just data bind it up. I have another um, button here that I simply um, click on, and that will give me a way to analyze the image for facial recognition. Like So that's it. That's my page. There's a little bit of code behind here just to put the binding context in place. And I didn't have to do this button here. I could have done an I command, um, obviously. But everything here is right inside of my XAML. So if I want to change things, I want to modify things, everything is shared now between iOS and Android. So how do I get this puppy in there? Well, it's super crazy easy. For iOS, I go into my app delegate, into my finish launching, I just add a Xamarin Forms init. That's it, that's super quick. There's not gonna really be any hit or anything like that on my performance, just boom, initialize it, done. Now, whenever I wanna to go to a page, here's what I've done is I have my view controller and I have a, a delegate source on here. So whenever I tap on an item right here is I grab my current image, the item that I have, I create a new details page. This is that XAML or XAML informed XAML page. I pass it the item, I pass it the view model, and all I have to say is create view controller. This will convert the Xamarin Forms content page into a native UI view controller that I can then use my own navigation in my iOS or Android app to actually push and pop. So here I say push view controller, give it the controller, do I want it to animate? Done. Literally four lines of code and that's it. So now when I click on a monkey, it navigates across. I get the, I'm inside of a UI navigation view. I can analyze the image if I want to. Of course, it's a monkey, so it doesn't know how to analyze the facial recognition on it. But I have the full page inside of here. If I was to come in and uh, let's say um, Google myself, let's see here, hit search. There we go, it goes off. So I'm using that stuff. Here's me. I analyze the image. Boom, I'm 100% happy because I'm always super happy. And I can scroll and I can do everything if, if it, it was longer. And I just threw down a bunch of pages inside of here. I can navigate around and I can see all the different things that are coming in, which is super awesome without doing any work at all. I'm just coming in, adding 
a, a, a shared now page that I've done. So it easily goes back and forth. I have the navigation, I have everything in it. So that's iOS, literally so drop dead simple. And at this point I could essentially rig up some messaging center. And if I needed to, to, to pass some data back and forth, I could pass data back and forth to that page because it's all there. So for Android though, it's a little bit trickier because you know, iOS, you're just pushing and popping content, uh, UI view controllers. And on Android, we're going to actually convert this to a fragment, which is super really fast, which is really nice. So what I've done is I have a details AXML and I've just created, this is actually just a fragment AXML and, and my application is a, a single activity right now. So I'm not using any fragments or anything like that today, uh, inside of here, just everything here is a fragment. So if you already had fragments, you wouldn't have to do this at all, but a, in a simple case where maybe I want to spin up a new activity, um, to navigate to it, I could put it here. So this source is super simple. It's just like a blank page. Um, if I go ahead and open this up, what I've done here is I've added a linear layout. I have my toolbar. So I still have my support toolbar in there and I have a frame layout and that's what I'll swap essentially when I press on it. So when I go into my uh, main activity, I have something very similar. I have some, you know, native stuff, setting up the camera. And when I set this up, whenever I tap on an item, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to start this details activity. So I pass some data you know, kind of hacky around it, but I pass some data around, I say start activity right here for the details activity, and then I'm kind of ready to go. Um, and that's where the magic is going to happen. So when I go into the details activity, it's a normal app compat activity. So it kind of falls into my normal flow. What I do here is I initialize Xamarin forms at this point, just whenever I'm ready to use Xamarin forms, that's when I'm going to do it. You could do it at app startup if you wanted to. This is just standard boilerplate code for my actual uh, application. And then the Xamarin forms code, actually I'm initializing it twice. I don't know why I'm initializing it twice. Probably don't need to do that, but just once. So you just need to initialize it here. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and what I have is I simply create that page again, right here. The difference here is that I simply say create fragment. So that's the extension method on it, on the page is create fragment, pass it the context. So I could create a UI view controller. I create a fragment, boom, I'm good. Now all I need to do is swap that fragment out. So that's all I need to do is swap it out. So literally like one, two, three lines of code again. Now, whenever I tap on this monkey, boom, I'm immediately inside of this actual application. Boom. All my images are loading for me, everything like that. The shared logic um, right there to analyze the image, to put it all down. And now I have this application that is essentially um, sharing code and user interface across iOS and Android right here between the two different applications. And I just was able to embed that in just a few lines of code. So I'm super excited for Xamarin Forms embedding. Uh, I'll link to this blog post. I'll link to my blog post um, that I've wrote on this. And I, I'm super excited about it. And I think when you see it in this short little 10, 15 minute video, it really gets to the point of cross of that we're not just sharing you know, our code, our, our views, or I mean, our view models and our models anymore. We're now able to dabble in Xamarin Forms super easily to get, you know, sharing code and sharing user interface. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Subscribe below. Um, go ahead and check out my blog, Mott's Codes. Follow me on Twitter at James Montemagno. Um, and feel free, like I said, subscribe. Check out some of my other videos here and let me know what you want to see uh, me cover here on YouTube. Till next time, I'm James.